Sleeping Beauty, Maleficent Return. Hello, beloved readers. Today, I have an exciting story to share with you. I hope it brings you joy and excitement. Today, Luna have a book named Sleeping Beauty, Maleficent Returns, Bedtime Stories for Kids. I think they're so pretty. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe to the Kid Channel for more stories. Thank you for reading. So, here we go. Princess Aurora and her fairy godmothers Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether got up early one morning to prepare the palace for a party. It was the anniversary of Philip and Aurora, and Aurora couldn't wait to share it with her kingdom. It looks amazing, she said to the fairies. I think we're almost done with the decoration. No, not quite, Flora replied. No, not quite. No, 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 Meriwether said. Make it blue, Aurora laughed. She said, whatever you want, my dears, before going to check on the food preparation. The palace was suddenly darkened by a shadow. Meriwether and Flora ran to the window. Meriwether exclaimed as he watched the sun disappear behind the moon. It is. Flora stated that magic could work in the most unexpected ways during solar eclipses. Meriwether shuddered in sometimes even frightening ways. Oh, oh, Fauna said that Maleficent is gone, so we don't have to be afraid. The darkness of the eclipse fell on Maleficent's castle at that moment. The windows lit up green, and the stone raven that was perched on the balcony became alive. Cow! it screamed, and flew inside to find its mistress. The source of the green light was soon visible to the raven. Maleficent's staff was glowing. The glass ball was cracked by the raven as it pecked at it with its beak. Then suddenly, the green smoke appeared twisting and turning to make Maleficent. The green smoke suddenly exploded, twisting and turning into Maleficent. She said to the bird, Come, my pet, let's see who is ready to welcome our return. Maleficent looked through her rooms and discovered that they were dark and empty. She sighed and said, It seems that you are the only faithful servant. Maleficent used her magic stick to check on the rest and found that everyone was at the palace. Prince Philip and Princess Aurora smiled as they greeted their guest. Maleficent's anger flashed in his eyes. She said, It seems that we have much to accomplish here. The palace was abuzz with activity, with Aurora and Philip exchanging gifts. Oh my goodness! Aurora said as the small puppy leaped into her arms. Philip exclaimed, Darling, I love it, as Aurora gave him a shining golden pendant with their portrait inside. Everyone cheered and was ready for a hearty meal and dancing. The music and laughter were suddenly interrupted by a loud screech. The room was filled with green mist and Maleficent appeared. I see that I was not invited to another celebration. Maleficent replied, Well, this will not be the last. Maleficent raised her staff and exclaimed, Fire, ice, moon, and sun transform skin and bone into cold and hard stone. Philip, the fairies, and their guests were enveloped by the green mist. They were instantly transformed into statues. Even a puppy turned into a stone figure. Aurora gasped in horror. You'll die if you don't have your loved ones around. Maleficent laughed and walked out of the palace. As Aurora looked at Philip and the fairies, tears fell from her face. She was unsure of what to do. Aurora's forest animal friends rushed into the room at that moment. They had been late to the anniversary party and had seen everything through the window. They tried to comfort Aurora. Thanks, friends, but I can't stay here, 
Aurora stated. I must go to Maleficent to break the spell. Aurora fled from the palace, despite the attempts of her animal friends to stop her. She ran toward the dark forest. As she approached Maleficent's castle, more black clouds appeared in the sky, and thorny shrubs clawed at her leg. Aurora ran, determined to save her kingdom. Maleficent sighed as the princess approached. Aurora exclaimed, Maleficent, I want you to lift the curse upon my people. I couldn't help you even though I wanted to. Maleficent responded, A spell like that can't be reversed, Aurora asked, and if I turned you into stone instead? Maleficent was thrilled and asked you would. You could spend eternity as a statue so that your family and friends would live forever. Maleficent replied. Aurora bravely replied, but you must swear they will awaken. I believe that it can be arranged, Aurora said, towering above the princess and raising her staff in the air. Aurora closed her eyes and feared the curse. Maleficent spoke the words and there was an instant flash of light, followed by a scream. Aurora was stunned as the evil fairy transformed into a dragon and disappeared. Prince Philip, along with others, awoke at the palace. Philip ran out of the castle, trembling that Maleficent had taken Aurora. As they flew behind him, the three fairies called out, Wait for us! A familiar face suddenly ran towards them. Aurora, are you okay? Philip was confused. After Aurora had explained everything, Flora smiled at Flora and said, Your selflessness reversed Maleficent's spell and riddled the world of her once more. Remember that love is the strongest form of magic? The group returned to the palace. The kingdom cheered their brave princess's courage, and everyone soon learned how Maleficent was defeated. They resumed the celebrations and continued to celebrate their brave and noble leaders as well as their love. We have reached the end of the story. Good job, friends. Thank you so much for reading with Luna on Tip Kid Channel. Bye. I'll see you next time.